Welcome to another interesting episode of our relationship series. Thank you for accessing our YouTube page and for subscribing for those that have subscribed. And if you have not, please and please just click that subscribe button. And I know that um, you will be blessed as we bring subsequent episodes that will be a blessing to you. I am Rimam Nungra Joel from Rimam Global Ministries based in Makodi, Benue State, Nigeria. We just log in right into uh, today's episode. By the grace of God, we want to address a very pertinent um, challenge or question, particularly among uh, young people. Uh, we have noticed that um, there is this is it a debate or a, there's a question that most of our young people have that after fulfilling the traditional rights you have found somebody you want to get married to and you have um the both party parents are involved and you have paid the traditional rights you have fulfilled the traditional rights pay the dowry is it not the marriage are you not good to go uh, can't you bring her in and um, you start living a husband and wife and um Maybe part of why that question is coming up is um, the cost of wedding of our time. There is so much that um, needs to be put in place. The financial implication, if you say you want to get married. Just yesterday I was speaking to a young, a, a young man and that is of age. He was complaining about not having enough money to get married. And so as a result of that, uh, a lot of young people are feeling why not? If not, if I am traditionally married, is it not a man or good to go? So let's just um, look from the biblical perspective. Because we are believers, we are Christians. We don't do, do things anyhow. This is what the Bible has to say about everything. And um, we want to take cue from scriptures. Part of why we are we're, we're discussing this is because one of the challenges we have also noticed is that people, some people are adopting the, the shaken method. There's an increased number of, um, uh, of young people borrowing the Shechem's method. What is the Shechem's method? Shechem method, there's an order in which things are done. After you have um, found somebody you want to get married to, the po both parents have been notified and there's parental consent and um, whatever is required traditionally to be done and the dowry is paid, then you you know the, what and what we're supposed to do step by step so but in the case of Shechem he saw Dina he loved her and that love is actually love because love is patient he actually, actually lost it after her and he took her and raped her before he went and met the parents and told the parents he loved her and he wanted to marry her you know in the Israel that is not done they are a, a people of God and they had laws. They had what governs them. There's a way things are done. This must be done first, then this second. So it is not right that you are sexually involved before you pay the dowry. It was a breaking of the order. It was a mass mal, mal abnormal. So that's why you notice that they deceived the Shechemites and they killed them. You know, you know the whole story. And so the, we are see, we're seeing a, a, an increasing number of that method. A young men um, having a desire towards a sister or a lady, whether they want to get married to her or not, then they get sexually involved. Before they start talking about marriage, it's not correct. The order is if you have done all you're supposed to do, both of you have, have agreed that you want to stay together and you have in, you've gotten parental consent and you've gotten the spiritual uh, blessing consent, your spiritual parents are giving consent. We have an episode that will tell you what to do um, step by step when you want to get married and all that. So if all these things have been fulfilled, then the traditional marriage can go ahead. And, you, and um, that's about, it depends. And traditional marriage has different, they say they do it in different cultures. It has to do with, there's a requirement of what you're supposed to pay. There's a money you're supposed to give and um, in the presence of the both families, then there's what you should do and that you're good to go. So as believers, we're saying that um, there's how you should 
do your go about uh, these things and that's what we want to look at so we want to make a reference to the jewish marriage uh, we we'll take a cue because well, the, the the marriage we see in scriptures is um, taking cue from the um, Jewish culture. So let's let me just take you a little bit through how do they go about um, their marriage and their wedding, so that we can be able to build on that and give an answer to whether you must do a church wedding or after traditional wedding you're good to go. Uh, you would in the Jewish culture if um, two parties, two, if a young man has found a young girl he wants to get married to, the um, bride price is actually paid by the, both, but by the parents. The father of the groom is the one that, uh, if you read the story of uh, Abraham, it was him that sent the servant to go and get a wife for his son, Isaac. And remember that the servant went with um, um, some gold, some jewelries, some items. He got, got some items. And when he went there, what did he do? When he, he, he made his intention known, when he found Rebecca, he made his intention known. Rebecca, of course, she took him to the parents. And that's how it should be done. Then he made the intention known. And the parents um, um, called her to find out whether she's down with it. She said yes. And the parents gave their, their consent. So you remember that he took out some gifts. He took out some, some, some gold, some jewelries. He gave some to the brother of Rebecca. Then he gave the mother. Then he gave some gifts to herself. So the, the money that in the Jewish culture is the father of the groom that pays the dowry. And most times the dowry is not in cash. Sometimes it's in it's in kind or some, and just like you see Jacob. Jacob in his own dowry, he walked for seven years for one of the wives, for, for Rachel, then walked another seven years for Leah, uh, or the other way around rather. And so, but in this context, he took out gifts, took out jewelries. He gave, the mo they call it moha. That's the name it's called in the uh, Jewish culture, moha. Then there's what is called matan. Matan is the gift that is given to the siblings, the, the one he gave to the mother, the one he gives to Rebecca is, is Matan. He gives to the person he wants to get married to. He gives her, gave her a gift, I give her, do that's Matan. Then Moha, M-O-H-A-R, is a, is a, is like the dowry, is what the father gives to the father. Or in that case, they gave to the brother who was like standing in for the father. So if that is done, there are two, um, over time, there are two things, the, the, there are two ways they contract the wedding. The first is, the one I'm talking about, when the traditional rights are, is given, the, the, the father gives the dowry, gives, pays the money to the father of the bride. Then there is another consummation. So the groom goes back and makes ready his house. And after a while, he comes back. Even though after paying pay the dowry, they are legally married, but she doesn't move into the man's house immediately. The man goes back and prepares his house. Then he comes back, and there's a procession. There's, they dance, they celebrate. Then they go to the groom's house, where the legal marriage by paying dowry is cons consummated in the groom's house. So they had two weddings. They had the pain, the dowry. Then there's, this, there's a procession, there's a dancing, there's a celebration that accumulates in the groom's house, which um, is um, the accumulation of the wedding. Having said all this, because just like I said, I want to take a cue from the Jewish tradition, which we can read uh, from the example of uh, Jacob's wedding and also Isaac and Rebecca and one or two other weddings we can make reference to. So, what do we learn from this? Or what can we recommend? Are you good to go after you pay your dowry? Of course, you have paid the dowry. That's the first requirement. That's the first expectation. That um, after um, the parents have given consent 
and and there are different expectations in different cultures. Um, in some cultures, they will give you a list of materials. This and this and this is what you should buy. This and this is what you should bring. And some cultures, they monetize it. And when they monetize it, you bring it in monetary terms. And you, they fix a date where when the parents of the groom comes and the parents of the bride are in their place. So they come and most times it's not a very elaborate uh, festivity. Maybe just buy some few drinks and uh, ex a lot of people are not really invited in, that, in, in such occasions. When that is done, it is, that's the first step. I'm, I'm bringing it to our own context and our own culture. That is the first step that needs to be done. Then, as believers and as Christians, since we belong to a household, since we belong to a body of Christ, since you're first of all from a culture, you're first of all from a, a traditional setup, so there's a traditional requirement you should fulfill, then you're also a part of a church family. You're also a believer. You're also a child of God. So after fulfilling the first traditional requirement, we don't encourage you to take her in immediately. We recommend that you fulfill the church requirement. What is it? Even the church wedding, they will ask you, have you paid the dowry? They will call the parents. And the parents will affirm that, yes, you have fulfilled the traditional requirement. You have paid the dowry. And when that is done, the father, the church, the pastor can, can go ahead and join you and do the blessing. So we expect that you fulfill the traditional rites, pay the dowry, then don't move in yet. And if you ask me, what is my advice in this respect? To cut costs. Part of the reason why uh, young um, uh, young men now are saying after traditional marriage we are good to go is because of the cost the cost of the wedding because most times the picture we have about church wedding is elaborate you have to cook for a lot of people you have to buy a suit you have to buy a wedding gown you have to transport this person you have to and if you're transporting them to where the wedding is taking place you have to foot the bills and before you know it um you are you are it's costing you so much so as a result of that Young men, if they can, even the traditional wedding in some cultures, they're expensive. So I'm encouraging that um, let's look at this issue of uh, we're not selling, uh, it's, you're not buying anybody. But it's a cultural thing that needs to be done. So that's why I love some, some Christian families. They don't uh, put much, um, much price on their daughters as for a bride price. That um, makes young people to um, sometimes to have to work so hard, get so much money, and that delays the wedding, wedding period. So we are advising that in cutting costs, that there's a way you can um, merge the two. That's our advice. If it's possible, as a traditional wedding is taking place, you can bring in the pastor, you can bring in the priest, so that he can pronounce the blessing, and you, you, you see your wedding vows in the presence of witnesses. That's the church tradition, which is expected that if you're a believer, you don't just do the traditional wedding and you move the lady in. No, get the, the consent, let, the, let the, the, the pastor come in, pray for, with you, join you together spiritually. Let there be people around to bless you. Jesus himself was invited to the wedding in Canaan of Galilee. So it's like you're inviting Jesus to come along with you. So I, I'm also recommending traditional wedding, church wedding, then also court wedding. Court wedding. The society rec recognizes the court certificate more than your, your church certificate. So I encourage that when there's an agreement between the two parties to wed, to, to marry, you, invo you bring in the court wedding in between um, those weddings. You should do it at whatever point in time that you can take it in. So, um, what are we saying in this episode? Must I do a church wedding? We're saying, yes, it's good. You're a church, you're a believer. Don't just get married traditionally and just move the lady in without following the, 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 the due process as it were. If you're not part of the body of Christ, no wahala. But as for believers, that is what we encourage. One of the um, offers that the church wedding gives us is it provides you counseling. 
before you get wedding, most of our churches, there's a counseling process. They give you time to, 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 there are some very topical issues that you're counseled about. If that is not in place, it will affect your, um, your understanding because what you know is what you bring in. So court wedding, counseling is very important. So I, I want to recommend that uh, we should be as simple as possible in our weddings. Let's, we must not have an elaborate wedding. That's part of the problem. Uh, I was talking with somebody the other day. They said the young man is, they want to wed next year. Why? Because he's trying to raise money. Say, how much does he have? Say, he has a million naira, but one million is, is not see enough. You must not have, I tell people that with 5,000 naira, you can get married. With 10 million, you can get married, depending on which side you want to go. So we must not do things because it is done in, you must have this and no. I love what one church did recently. Very interesting. Do you know what they did? He said that from today, there's, every Friday there's going to be a wedding. That Friday wedding is for those that um, don't, must not do it elaborately. Just come with your friends, come with your parents, wherever you want to come with, one or two, four or five persons. Then the pastor will join you in church. Then you take your person in. If you want to do any celebration, good. You don't want to do, no hala. Then on Saturday, those that want to do the elaborate one can go ahead. That gives room for any, anybody that's, that has found a wife. So far, you have a means of income, something that can take care of somebody with. You must not have some big money stashed somewhere so that uh, we're not waiting till you save one big money somewhere to get married. So we encourage that. Make the wedding as simple as possible. Don't make it too elaborate. And that, that will reduce um, a lot of things. And I, I've said it, please don't, you're not pleasing anybody. You're pleasing God. Then you're, both of you should be happy. Don't, after getting married, you have, you have bills to pay. I know of somebody that after getting married, the next one or two years, they were not staying well. They were, they were paying bills because they borrowed money. The lady said she wanted an elaborate wedding. So they borrowed money from here and there. So the small, the, she thought that she was going to get money in the wedding. So, and surprisingly, they didn't get that much money. The little money they got, they, food, they paid some bills. And they had to be going to the parents' house to get food to eat. What is that? Remember that they say marriage after the wedding. Wedding is a day. Marriage is a lifetime. So please and please and please, let's make our marriages and weddings as simple as possible. So if you have gotten somebody to marry and you have fulfilled all that is expected, please go ahead and um, you're good to go. I want to um, just round up on this episode uh, with this note that um, God um, intends that you be happily married and God wants us to um, enjoy our, ma our marriage and our homes. But we're giving this counsel to our young friends that have issues with um, uh, maybe getting money enough and all that. We say that you can just go ahead with the little you have and um, so far you have fulfilled the traditional rights. You can go ahead to the church wedding and receive the blessing and do the court wedding and you're good to go. But please don't take in a lady into your house before you pay the dowry, pay the dowry, get the parental blessing, get the church blessing, then you're good to go. So I pray that God will help you in that respect. Thank you. And uh, I want to pray with you that God will grant you favor. God will bless the work of your hands and God will establish you. The Bible says he set the solitary in their homes. Lord, I pray that you set my young friends in their homes. Uh, I pray that you empower them and grant them favor as concerns their marriage. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. See you in the next time we meet. God bless you. Thank you. I'm done.